by 74, Bangladesh ended up with a famine. Already it was a devastated economy because of the war. Almost everything was destroyed, damaged, and led to famine, not of a small measure. Hundreds of thousands of people were dying of hunger. So here he, someone, a young mm -hmm. teacher teaching economics, full of enthusiasm, believing in all those elegant theories of economics. It can have all the solutions, how great those theories are. And gradually, those boys get muted. He feels in a classroom that you're not talking about reality, you're talking about some make-believe stories, which is called economic theory. Because the reality of life is completely different outside the classroom. People are dying, not because of any disease, not because of any kind of epidemic, just because people don't have just a little bit to eat. And you see the death coming in a very slow motion. You know this is going to die very soon because it's inching its way through. And you feel totally useless as a human being that you can't do anything. All your glorious theories have no direction for you in a situation like that. So I felt that instead of fuming about it and feeling uselessness about it, why don't I just get rid of all those ideas and theories and be just a simple human being and try to be next to another human being and see if you can relate to that person in some way to be useful to him or her. I thought I could do that as a human being. I didn't have to know anything as a human being. Probably responses will come naturally from me. So I started doing that every day. I'll go around in the village, which is just next door to the university, and see what can I do for today. So I did a lot of tiny little things individually, person to person kind of thing, still feeling a little bit at ease with myself that I'm not totally useless after all. I can be of some use to somebody. Then something started emerging as I go around in the village. I learned a lot because I never learned about people and poverty. In the book is one thing, but to see that face, see that life daily way, it's a completely different experience. What became bigger and bigger in me was the loan sharking that is going on in the village, even in a situation of famine. People lending tiny, tiny little money, and in return, capture the full control of the life of the person who borrowed from you. He or she is totally converted into a slave labor. It's no voice, no will, nothing. You work whatever the lender wants you to do, the loan shark wants you to do. So I see it once, I see it twice, and it looks so ugly, so horrifying when you see it face to face. And you again feel terrible that you are so insignificant in the face of this problem that you see every day and you see how people are being abused by this. And you realize that this is a problem not only for one village in Bangladesh, the whole Bangladesh, same problem, loan sharking, whole subcontinent, probably whole world goes through it. And what can you do? You have no power changing that. Whether if you are a politician, if you are a decision maker, you have outlawed that, but would it make it disappear? No. That will continue, but some way, kind of bypassing the whatever legal restrictions you have posed. So you don't see escape route from that. Suddenly it came to my mind, I can solve it. Maybe not for the whole world, but I can solve it for the people that I see in this village. It's very simple. I get very agitated, I get very excited. I can solve it, and it's a very simple thing to do. 
all I have to do, lend money myself. If I lend the money, then they do not have to go to the loan shark. The problem is solved. Why do you feel terrible inside of you? I can't do anything. I can do something. So I went right ahead. I thought that's the right thing to do. So I took money out of my pocket and started giving this to people. The first loan, as Ashmina was mentioning, was a total amount of $27 given to 42 people. So you can imagine what kind of money we are talking about. It's such a shocking experience to see even that tiny money is so rare and so scarce. And what is easy, I can give it to them. And I see the excitement in people after they got it. They didn't expect such a thing to happen. They thought it's a kind of a miracle. As I go around in the village like I did every day, every other day, now I see people look at me in a very strange way. They're looking at me changed. They look at me as if I've done something miraculous. It's, a, it's not normal for a human being. I started kind of kidding with myself, thinking, if you can become an angel by $27, why don't I do another $27? Probably I'll be a super angel. And it's such a small money, I could afford it. So I went ahead, more people coming, I'm lending money. And it became very popular activity. So I tried to structure it a little bit so that people understand what's going on. 